It's, it's nothing to write home about. And it's making healthcare delivery in an area like that very difficult. So it's bringing us to the conversation about our healthcare delivery system here in this country. And whether or not authorities are serious about dealing with the teething challenges when it comes to healthcare delivery. Because this has got to do with lives. Lives potentially could be lost. And because of this same situation, there is a mother and a child who died in an ambulance. Yes, because they were being transported from one of the communities in the Upper West region to Wa, because in that area they couldn't get the necessary healthcare delivery. And so we're focusing on this on our take today. I've been joined via Zoom by our Upper West Regional Correspondent, Robert Dingme. Uh, he filed uh, a report on this particular situation, and he'll help us understand really what the situation is like in the Upper West region as regards our healthcare delivery system. Uh, Robert, welcome to uh, GH Today. Thank you very much for, for joining us this morning. Now, help us understand exactly what happened in this particular instance where a mother and her child died in an ambulance because they were being transported from a place where they couldn't get the necessary medical attention. Yeah, thanks so much for this uh, opportunity uh, to explain to people to understand exactly what happened uh, on the ground. Uh, it happened that a community do say, it happens to be very far away from uh, Bulinge, which happens to be the referral center uh, for this zone. They, they have uh, zoned the what is constituents uh, district uh, into zones two. We have one towards the, the, the district capital, which happens to be around 4C. And this biggest referral center happens to be stationed at Bulinge. And Duse happens to be under the Bulinge Health Center. So their chip uh, compounds there are being serviced by uh, the health center in Bulinge. And also they take referrals from the Bulinge, uh, the Duse up into the, the Bulinge area. But then it happened that at the morning, the man's wife got uh, fell in labor, got in labor, and they had to uh, move to the clinic in Duse. Duse happens to be one of the cutoff areas. It's actually behind a very big uh, mountain. You have to maneuver your way through into that community, and the road is is west of. And during the rain seasons like this, it, it's not easy having access into these communities, but. Unfortunately, also, they don't have mobile network there. So they had to go to the chief's compound, find a, a tricycle, which they, they found difficult to find because most of the people with tricycle had left for the farms. And they, because they couldn't call for ambulance, they were now moving towards Bulinge. And fortunately, on their way, in the outskirts of Motigu, another community, they were able to place a call uh, to help uh, personnel in Bulinge to arrange for an ambulance to pick them up. But halfway uh, from Motiru, then the ambulance met them and took them to the hospital. But when they got to the hospital to assess the situation and, and see to it that she delivers, it happened that it, it wasn't as they expected. And fortunately, on, on their part, and unfortunately, I, I don't know, well, let me put it that fortunately, the doctor the only doctor in the area was at the health facility to have a, a, a talk with the, the health personnel because he had just been posted into the, the district about three weeks ago. So he had to hold talks with them. And unfortunately, or fortunately, they, they moved, they came in with the, the woman in labor. And according to the doctor, at that point, he realized that um, it wasn't safe to have the delivery there because the woman had uh, gone into seizure about twice. So they decided to proceed to the to the regional capital, which happens to be Wa, also about 35 kilometers away. So on their way, the woman died. And the, with the consent of the husband, the doctor decided to, to operate the woman. And in fact, according to the doctor, they had to stop at the community to buy blade because they didn't have surgical blades in in the ambulance so they had to just buy blade from a store to open the woman and bring out the baby at least once they were they could confirm the woman was dead and the baby still alive 
all they needed to do was to save the baby. So they bought blade along the way and cut open to bring out the, the baby. But unfortunately, because there were no uh, oxygen uh, cylinders in the car just to keep the baby halfway, the baby also passed on. And they had to still get to work before they can return. But according to the, the husband, she, he, he was charged uh, 300 Ghana cities uh, before the ambulance came to pick them up. And they agreed. And when they went to pay the 300 cities, the ambulance drivers told him that, considering the circumstance, all they could do was to take half the amount uh, and give half back to him because they will use the half to go and, and wash the car. And according, later when I was having a conversation with the man, he told me the ambulance service actually was insisting on the money, even when they assured that they were going to pay. So they delayed for close to five hours before they got there to, to, to take the, the woman to the hospital. And that has just been the situation. And when you look at the War East in particular, it's really a cut-off area. When you look at the population there, close to 93,000, over 93,000, if I'll put it right, because the, the doctor is just one doctor also at the place. And Bullinghe is one of the largest uh, districts after Wa West in the region. And the health situation there, like the doctor uh, stated earlier in the interview, he made it clear that even laboratories to make basic tests, they can't do it. If, if there's a situation where they'll have to operate somebody, they have no theater. And that, that is the biggest facility in the whole of that district. And the doctors, as he said, he's the only one there. And probably it's because he's even the director. He's the medical director, the, the district director. So basically, probably, if not for that sake, there wouldn't have been a medical doctor in the whole of that, that area. And the roads are worse. When you go to the Wa East uh, uh, district, the roads are worse. And trust me, these are places where we have most of our food coming from. Maize, yam, everything. But when you talk of such important things as having good health access, then it is cut off. So I had to go to Duse to have this story done. But uh, interestingly, Duse is also one of the places that have uh, a game reserve. And I expected that some of these things, at least once they have a reserve like that, it, it should also have some reflection in the community. But unfortunately, that isn't the case. And the nature of the place is is rocky. You don't you, you scarcely have people settling along the, the, the way and that kind of thing. So it, it makes the, the situation very, very difficult. Right, Robert. And what is the state of health infrastructure in particular, you know, in Duse where you mentioned and even in uh, Wollenga where this mother and her child were being transported from to Wa uh, with regard to health facilities and in, health in infrastructure. Fact, when, what, what is the situation? Yes. Should I go on? Yes. Okay, when I was talking to the, the community members, they made me understand that even when they, they go to the health center, the best they can get is paracetamol. And trust me, when I went there to the, the, the chief's compound, it's, it was a sad scene because a, a health facility that looked like a, a, a trap, a death trap sort of, because windows, we should have mosquito nets covered, the windows, all this were torn, the roof, the book, the window frames made of wood were also very weak. You could see uh, insects in them to mean it's weak. And when you look at the, the facility, you go in there, the uh, dispensary, you don't have any much drugs there. They don't have a refrigerator where they can even store their vaccines. They have to come to Bulinge, which is also close to 30 kilometers away. And the road is not good. So when you look at all this in the health uh, facility there, it's, it's, it's very sad. Though they have accommodation for health personnel, but eventually the, the facility don't have what it takes to cater for people. It's just the, the human 
being that is there, the nest that is there, and drugs, according to the, the resident, when I confronted the nurse, he admitted, yes, it's not their making. They don't. They can't keep every drug with them. So even when there's uh, a, a vaccination exercise, they'll have to go as far as bullying it to get vaccine because their refrigerator is not working. It's been down for over two years now, according to the, 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 the health personnel. And I think that considering some of these situations, then you, you just know that they are, they are just living by faith. Else, health-wise, and I wasn't surprised whilst we were talking with the community members, they kept calling on God and not calling on health personnel to take care of them. And it's really a very sad situation. And it's not just peculiar to Duse in that area. The whole of that area, except in Fosu, where you have another uh, health facility, uh, but like the doctor categorically stated, there is, there is no, he's the only doctor in the area. And when you look at the situation, it means that until people come in to intervene, it's not going to be an easy thing for, for residents of the Wa East here in the Upper West region. Very well, Robert. Um, thank you for bringing us that story, and thank you very much for painting that very vivid picture uh, for us this morning here on GH Today. And it's not a situation that we should be happy about at all as a country. And one of the biggest problems I have with leadership in this country is that when it comes to paying attention to some of these pertinent problems in rural areas, it is a problem. Rural areas can go for years without receiving the necessary attention. It looks like uh, authorities are not concerned or bothered about what happens in rural areas until a media house goes to a particular area and then does a story and then the story gets attention and then the various authorities begin to pay some attention to that area and then do what needs to be done. Otherwise, it looks like people are just left to their fate. And that is unfortunate. How can a health facility be operating and a refrigerator, which is very essential for the storage of medicine over a period of time so that people have access to these medicines so that their lives can be saved? How is it that a health facility which is serving a particular area which has over 93,000 residents has a refrigerator broken down for up to two years without being replaced or even being fixed. How much would it cost for the Ghana Health Service to provide a refrigerator for a health facility in that particular area? How much would it take? And these are the things that we continue to lament about in this country. And we sometimes get tired of lamenting about these things because it seems as if leadership doesn't care. And if leadership doesn't care, people are going to die. And these are valuable uh, human resource that we are losing. Who knows what this unborn child could have become in future? Now, a husband has lost a wife, a father has lost a child, all because of inadequate health infrastructure and healthcare delivery system because it's a rural area. Sometimes we are too focused and fixated on the urban areas, too focused on Accra, on Kumasi, on Cape Coast, on, you know, Koforidia, on all of those urban areas. And we forget those in the hinterlands. Don't they also deserve proper healthcare delivery? Don't they? I believe that they do. So why? Why do we continue to allow this situation to exist in this country where the urban areas have all the resources, all the doctors, all the specialists, all those people? Are the urban areas? They are in Accra and Kumasi and Sunyane and Cape Coast and all of those areas. And places in the hinterlands, in the rural communities, in the Upper West region, in the Upper East region, in the North and in the Savannah region, those people are left to their fate. Doctors and nurses don't want to accept postings to those areas. Are those people who are living there not Ghanaian enough to get the necessary health care delivery and get the best? We need to rethink the way that we do things in this country. Otherwise, people will continue to die. And these are some of the things that we should even be thinking about when leaders come to us, especially in those areas, and they want us to vote for them during elections.
Anyway, let's hear what some of you people, um, some of you have to say, you know, as regards this on, on social media. Evelyn Arba Edo is there, uh, or is here with, with, with some of your comments. We put up a question as regards this particular situation in the Upper West region on our social media page. So let's hear what some of you had to say. Araba, what have people been saying? That, um, this is a sad situation, I must say. But for you out there, with all what is happening, do you think Ghana has gotten its priorities right in terms of investment in critical infrastructure with the story that you just heard? And this is what you have to say on Twitter. Learn sense, okay? that's the name, says that they go use the money to go build cathedral. I didn't say it. Len Sense is saying that. Miles is saying that. Hell no. While Parkwesi says that. What happened to Agenda 111? What's the current state of it now? After investing millions in designing the logo and all, what has happened to it? Okay. And... Um, Prosper says that, unfortunately, the North has the highest number of politicians in Ghana. But to me, they are failing woefully to develop their backyard. All they preach about is who did better in developing either Kumase or Accra. They don't even usually visit places they were forged into politics. That is the opinion of Prosper. And Boachi Patricia says that, no, it hasn't. His Excellency says all. And um, Agape Enterprise says that if there's any country on this planet called Earth whose government have zero interest in health, then it's Ghana, 100%. We are much interested in dirty politics than our health. Most of our health facilities are not accessible, especially in the rural areas. May God help us. Let's see what you have to say on Facebook too. And Henry says that uh, we are busy investing in political parties. That is our priority. While Juliana says that, hmm, very sad. Um, they will tell you the Ghana card is better than any other thing in this country. Mampong um, says that they are busy on Ghana cards and SIM cards. That is their priority. And Omar Issa says that after we build the National Cathedral, we will find solution to that. Or form us to do more members. I they lie. Okay, Francis says that where for weeks now, some are without oxygen in Upper East. That's the die situation there. Brad Saki says that even doctors from the northern parts of the country don't want to go there. It's very pity as a nation. And Alasco says that this is sickening and disheartening. I'm a Ghana. And uh, he says that with some crying emojis. Asiedu says that mispra uh, misplaced priorities in Kwa, National Cathedral over hospitals. Obibini si Yenipao. Okay. And Yusuf says that break the eight is our priority and nothing else. Whilst Joseph says that a country with its leaders who are interested in selling, uh, stealing funds meant for projects. What hurts most is that they go and take these monies and we the poor and innocent citizens will have to suffer and pay. Of course. And um, Josiah says that only God can deliver this country. 